Hello, good people, and praise the Lord. I wish to welcome you for today's episode of the Prophetic Voice. I am glad that you could get time to join us. I am persuaded that our interaction will edify your soul and produce outcomes that will enhance your work in Christ and that will unfold the prophetic dimensions into your life. I welcome you so much today and I want to appreciate my spiritual authority. I recognize you, Reverend Samuel Chomba and Pastor Mary. I thank God for you. I have grown in, uh, in, in the Lord because of your time that you have spent with me, because of the, the, the investment that you have done in me to see me grow. I appreciate you so, so, so much. May the Lord God bless you so much. I want to appreciate my co-host, Pastor Susan, who is not together with us today. And I know from wherever she is, she is blessed and she is lending also to receive the word this evening. I want you to take uh, you through, this is prophetic voice, and so we say this year we are dealing with prophetic uh, issues, and so I know you are set, you are ready, I know you have your bundles ready for a takeoff, and we will take you, I will take you through. We are talking about realms of prophecy, that is what we started, and last week we handled on prophetic, uh, prophetic office, and today I want us to, to, to start uh, with a prophetic um, uh, prophecy in prayer or prayer dimension in the, in the office or, you know, in the, in the prophecy arena. And so we want to see how one can get helped through prophecy, how you can use prophecy in your prayer life, how can you, use, you can use prophecy in your prayer life. And uh, I want to thank God because he has given us uh, the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ. And so through that, we are able to, 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 walk, uh, to walk in prayer. We are able to, uh, to open up for him. We are able to release us and to yield to the spirit of God. When we talk about uh, uh, prayer, uh, Prayer, this is a dimension where prophecy is as a result of deep, deep dimensions in prayer. There are people in the world or in the Bible who were greatly used or who took advantage of prayer dimensions in the prophetic arena. They were helped. Their lives were stuck, but they received great help when they continually and they continued in prayer. And we can see some few examples. Uh, we can see the example of Elijah. We can see example of Hannah. In the book of, uh, in the book of Ephesians, or in the book of James, sorry, James chapter 5 and verse 16, the Bible says there is a part that I'm interested in when, you, uh, when we take uh, the, the amplified version. The Bible says, Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another, that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind at heart. Now, the part I'm interested in is the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. That is dynamic in its working. This prayer, this is a kind of prayer that I'm talking about. This is a kind of prayer that produces results. The, path, the, the fervent, eventual prayer of a righteous man. The Bible talks about it availeth much. When we talk about a fervent prayer, we are talking of a deep focus and a passion-filled petition to God. We are talking about expressing your heart to God, pouring out your heart to God, understanding the dynamics, understanding you know, the power that works around you, within you, that can produce uh, for you tremendous results or tremendous power. And we, 
we are getting to, say, to see through the book of James that this power is helping you and it's working in you. When you realize that as a believer, you start to walk in this dimension of prayer. You start to take advantage of the communal, you know, the communion uh, uh, fact that we have been given by our God. Uh, when you take advantage of that, then you start to put more effort. You start to put more of your time in prayer. You start to walk through this journey. Because there are things that will never happen until we have paid attention in, the, in our place of prayer. I know we, as believers, we pray, we pray many times. But I'm talking about not, ab not about the length of the many times or the many days you have prayed. I'm talking about the depth. I'm talking about the depth of your prayer. You can pray for many, many days, yes. You can pray for a year. You can pray for months. You can pray for a day. But I'm talking about any time you enter into prayer, you, you will get results. You are praying prayers that will give you results. You are praying prayer that will help you to enter into a place where you get, you know, you, you get solutions for your request or for your petition. And this is what Hannah did. When you read in the book of First Samuel, and uh, chapter, chapter 1, First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible says, And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord. Eri noticed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. So Eri thought she was drunk. Eri said to her, How long will you be intoxicated? Put wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor a strong drink, but I was pouring out my soul before the Lord. We can see verse 16. Regard not your handmaid as a weakened woman, for out of my great complaint and bitter provocation, I have been speaking. Then Eri said, Go in peace, and may the Lord God of Israel grant you petition which you have asked of him. Now, when you look and when you study this prayer that Hannah played before God, uh, the priest, even the priest at that time, was not aware, was not aware. But when, she when the priest looked closely at him, when he looked at him, he realized this woman is beyond prayer. She is not just playing. There, there are no uh, ones that, that are hand. Only her rib, you know, her ribs were moving. And so Eri realized Hannah is in deep intercession. She is in deep, uh, you know, uh, petition. And so her body, her body, her body moved her, moved together with her spirit. The prayer she made was able to bring her body into a place of yielding. Her spirit was able to, 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 to affect her lips. Her spirit was able to, to travel in the realms and dimensions of the spirit. She was able to get God's attention regarding her matter. She only, uh, uh, she only moved her lips, meaning there was a lot of activity in her spirit. Much of her prayers was understood in the spirit. And so when Arai saw that, he understood that, that this must receive an answer. And so the one that came from Arai, or the result that she got, it was confirmed by the, you know, the priest, the priest in the temple. And she was told, go your way and go in peace. And may the Lord God of Israel grant your petition, which you have prayed and asked of him. When we talk about 
pray and get, giving you results. Our prayer producing you uh, tremendous power. It uh, means there, is, there must be a place of pouring. There must be a place where your heart is focused. Your heart is, you know, your heart is directed unto him. It means you, you, have, you, have, you have found a place where only you and God, where your spirit is fully and able to interact with God. When we talk about prophecy or the gift of prophecy, it has to do with more than just, you know, a public utterance. It has to do more with just speaking in the public. When we talk about this gift of prophecy, or when we talk about prophecy, we are talking about, uh, we are talking about something that can help us, you know, to propel and to progress our lives. In the book of Psalms, we see how David used Psalms, you know, in the place of prayer. He used them to praise God and even to bring his petition before God. When we talk about uh, the spirit of prophecy, we are saying that the Lord or the spirit of God can help us, can inspire us, can give us, uh, you know, inspired messages in our place of prayer to bring forth that which we so much wait. When you get into a place of prayer, it is good to understand the Lord needs your attention more than the problem you are handling. And so it is a place of yielding. It is a place of surrendering to God. It's a place of giving your all, concentrating on him concentrating on him, seeking him more than seeking his hand. You know, it is a place of pouring. It is a place of a blessing, a blessing the gift of God, a blessing the power of God. It is a place of more of him other than more of you. It is a place of focusing on God more than focusing on people. A place of focusing on, you know, on what God has to say more than focusing on what people have to say. And so when David is talking about Psalms and is talking about, you know, bringing his issues before God, he, was, he is telling us or he is showing us that we can get inspiration by the Spirit of God to speak out, to speak out, to speak out prophetic messages, you know, even for the things that are to come. Because when you read the book of Psalms, you will see David, you know, talking about, you know, things that are to come. He is talking about Messiah. He is talking about Christ. He is so talking about the death of Christ. He is talking about how Christ will be revealed in the return east. And so when we talk about Psalms, when we talk about singing to the Lord, when we talk about singing hymns and singing Psalms, it means you get inspiration in your place of prayer. You get inspiration through psalms and through hymns and when you get inspiration you speak them out you speak them out you sing them to yourself you sing them to god you sing hymns to god and uh paul uh demonstrated to us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 19 verse 19 is he said about speaking to one another in psalms in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs Offering, sp offering places with voices. Yes. Offering place, praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. It's a place, I've seen it, it's a place of pouring. It's a place of pouring out your heart to God. And therefore, releasing yourself, uh, uh, helping, you know, giving your, your, your tongue, giving your mouth, giving you your body as an instrument that the Lord can use to communicate something to you, to communicate something to your spirit. I love our father, Reverend Samuel Chomba, when at times he says, at times he, he may not have the message that he may not have the message or a specific prophecy regarding the situation that he is going through or regarding 
uh, what he wanted Aaron to do. But through speaking, as he continued to speak the word of God, as he continued to, to delight in his place of prayer, he get to speak things that he hears them while he speaks. As I would encourage us, the body of Christ, let's spend time in our place of prayer. Let's study in our place of prayer. For us to get those results, for us to get those psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, the songs will not just be automatic. It will take one day, it will take two days, it will take a persistent move from us and within us to express ourselves continually before God, you know, to pour ourselves before God. Many times when we come to in our place of prayer, uh, the Lord will bring one from within us, or the Spirit of God will bring a one from within us. And sometimes, many times, those people who spend time in the Lord, those people who spend time in a place of prayer, they will they will engage in another new turn. They will engage in an other new turns. In the process of speaking out things by the Spirit of God, in the process of, out, you know, of pouring out their hearts to God, they, they expose themselves to a dimension where they are able to speak in a new language, in another language, a language that will enable them and address issues at hand. A language that will connect them with God. And so I will urge us, we that are believers, the born again, because the new language, the new speaking in tongues, is for the believers, can only, uh, can only be used by believers, or it's only believers who can be able to speak in tongues when they expose themselves continually in, in the, with the Spirit of God. When they guess when they bask in his presence then they are they receive the gift of speaking within new tongues and this gift is given to the oriented spirit filled brethren or believers and for us to understand and for us to know that we are spirit filled we now get the infeeding of the spirit of the holy ghost which is now speaking in new tongues we know that we are filled with the Spirit of God when we start to speak, you know, with new tongues. In the book of Mark, chapter 16 and verse 17, Jesus was, uh, was telling his disciples, and these and this attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new, in new languages. And so, Jesus was emphasizing this to his disciples. The believers, them that have uh, believed in him, he told them that in his name, that they will drive out demons, but more so, they will also be able to speak in new tongues. They will also be able to speak in new tongues. God desires that every spirit-filled believer to do more than speaking in tongues. Once you have started to speak in new tongues, you will not speak in tongues for one day or for two days. We are encouraged to speak in new tongues more than many times. Paul addressing that issue, he told Corinthians that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Meaning, it was not in terms of the many times but in depth, I seek more to know. I seek more to undress. I speak more to engage in tongues. When you are a believer, it is good to seek. It is good to make sure you do more than speaking in tongues. I know when we get to prayers, how we speak in tongues. Many of us, we speak in tongues. But there is a call to more than speaking in tongues. Because our redemption, our, our deliverance, you know, our breakthrough, our grace through comes. We start to bear fruits when we engage. When we go further, when we go up in prayer, we start to see fruits of our prayer. In the book of 1 Corinthians, today we, we have many verses and many chapters of the Bible. I know we will read by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, verse 13. 
Uh, therefore, the person who speaks in a known tongue should play for the power to interpret and explain what he says. For us to be able to speak in new tongues, or for us to be able to, uh, you know, to engage more than tongues, we must seek, we must pray more than the tongues. We must pray beyond the tongues. We must seek to engage beyond. We must pray to interpret what those, those tongues meant. At times you get into prayer and you start to speak in new tongues. And as you continue to speak, as you continue to, uh, to guess and you, as you continue to go deep in, in tongues, you realize there are ones, you know, the Holy Spirit has started to use your tongue. You have now a right tongue. You can now be able to speak and speak and speak and speak. When you continue, when you pursue, when you continue to speak, you continue to receive understanding of what you are praying about. You continue to prophesy in your own personal prayer life. You begin to speak about the things that are hidden regarding you, regarding the situation that is at hand at that time. For you to speak in tongues, it means you are speaking to God. That is what Paul said. Those who speak in tongues, they speak to God. There is a place of public utterance or public praying and there is that personal place where you speak in tongues and you are able to interpret those tongues. Don't only speak in tongues. Speak to, you know, seek to interpret the tongues. Speak to understand. Speak to know. After all this I have uttered in my place of prayer, what is it that the Spirit of God is, you know, want me to grasp? What is it that the Lord is speaking to me about? When you start now to seek to interpret, then you start now to understand. You start now to have a supernatural utterance. You start now to understand, to have a fruitful understanding. You start now to, you know, to pray in the spirit and also pray with understanding. You start now to sing in the spirit and you also sing in understanding. When you speak with a supernatural utterance, it means you are understanding is, you know, your understanding is unfruitful. Anytime you speak in tongues, you, you, you are speaking in a known language or a known tongue. So when you seek to interpret that tongue, it means your understanding becomes fruitful. You start to understand what you are saying in tongues. You start to understand what you are singing in tongues. You start to bring it forth. You start to utter it forth. Praise the name of Jesus. However, when you place in prayer and in speaking in a known tongues, what I'm saying is you should seek to understand those, those tongues. Have an understanding. Let your understanding be useful. In the book of John, chapter 16 and verse 13, John said, when we pray, or when, when the spirit of truth comes, chapter, uh, chapter 13, yes, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth spirit, uh, the truth giving spirit comes, it will guide you into all truth. The whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority. But he will tell you, he will tell whatever he hears from the Father, he will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I am getting excited in the Lord. Because when the spirit of truth comes, we said prophecy cannot happen without the spirit of God. It is an inspired utterance. You speak things that are to come in your life. 
And so when you speak through the help of the spirit, it means the spirit of truth, who is the truth giving spirit, who is the spirit that gives life to your mortal body, or who is the spirit that gives life to your spirit, it guides you into all truth. What does that mean? It guides you into the truth regarding your, the issue you are praying about. It gives you, it guides you, it takes, it takes you beyond the matter that you are tackling. Remember the Lord is Alpha and Omega. The Spirit of God, you know, the Spirit of God is, knows, you know, the Spirit of God knows all truth about God. And when he comes in you, he reveals to you, when you start speaking in tongues, when you get into that deep dimensions, he starts revealing to you his own messages, you know, the message of the Lord regarding your life. He starts taking charge in your life. He speaks with such a great authority in your life. He takes the center stage in your matter. And therefore, it starts to tell you Whatever he hears from the Father, that is the part we are talking about interpreting. Interpreting, the part of interpreting. When you start to interpret, it means the Spirit of God has started to speak to you with an audible voice that you can hear. There is a voice, there is a voice within your spirit that is able to pick the dimensions of the spirit or the language of the spirit. And when you get to that place, now, you are able to hear messages that have been sent to you through the Spirit of God to your spirit. And when he starts to announce to you and to declare to you the things that are to come, then those things must happen. Because remember we said the prophetic, prophetic voice or prophetic word or prophecy is a word power. It is a word that brings power, comes with power. It is a word that has got an ability. It has got the ability to propel. It has got an ability to sustain itself until it comes to pass. And so when the Spirit of God gives you an utterance and declares to you the things that are to happen, it means there is, an, a, a, you know, there is a persuasion within you. There is a stamping within you that tells you, that propels you, that agrees with your spirit that it is possible. There is a turning in your spirit that allows you to understand, allows your mind to understand, gets your whole body to understand that whatever the spirit of God has said to you, it is possible. And so the Lord is calling the church today. The Lord is calling us today, or the Spirit of God is calling us today, to enter in prayer, in dimensions, and to take advantage of that platform that the Lord has given us. The communion platform that we can speak with him, that we can engage with him, that he has given us a language that we can use. And through that language, we can be able to understand the things that he has kept for us. There are those things that are freely given to us by God. And those things can only by, be understood by the Spirit of God. They can only be given to us by the Spirit of God. And so when the Spirit of God is speaking through us, when he is interceding through us, that is what Paul said in the book of uh, Romans, that he speaks to us and through us with, with groanings, you know, with groaning, with utterances, you know, that are past your wants. You see, like the, the prayer of Hannah that we have seen, we, we have seen in, in the book of Samuel. Hannah could not be able to, you know, to pray with ones. He could not be able to utter ones that the priest can hear. But her spirit, there was a boiling, there was a boiling in her spirit that helped her. There was a boiling in her spirit that mattered once. There was such a full and powerful force that was working within her. There was a tremendous force. There was a dynamic, you know, uh, power that was working within her. And all that was embedded in her spirit. The good thing about prophecy or about, uh, you know, prayer or about our engagement in, uh, in the spiritual in, or in the supernatural di dimensions is that everything that we require for us to engage, we have it. We have all it takes because the Lord gave us his spirit without a measure. 
And so we talk about growing and increasing in grace, increasing in faith, growing in faith, multiplying the grace of God in our lives, increasing the faith. You know, uh, entering into realms and dimensions through prayer, making sure that we are being builded up. You know, we are building ourselves up in prayer by speaking in tongues. There is that verse in the book of Jude, chapter, um, the book of Jude, uh, verse 20, uh, that talks about uh, verse 20, Jude chapter, yes, Jude has got only one, one, uh, one, Jude has only one, one chapter. Jude, but you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress, rise like an, an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, Jude is bringing out the picture that I'm talking about. Building yourselves up. If you prayed yesterday in tongues, and you, maybe you never produced any results, maybe you never got anyone, there is a call to go higher today. There is a call to build yourself up from your previous faith, from the faith that you have gathered, from the faith that you have built, built in prayer. There is, there is a place for us to build ourselves higher and higher, to rise, to rise, to, you know, to rise high, like an edifice. That is what the Bible says, higher and higher by praying in the Holy Spirit. We can only build our, more, your, our faith. We can only rise up higher. We can only get into a place of hearing the Spirit of God or what he is saying through us when we pray in the Holy Spirit. And praying in the Holy Spirit is praying in new tongues. It's having utterance that, you know, spiritual utterance that helps you to understand what the Spirit is saying in your life or inside you. So, every believer can be able to pray out the plan of God regarding their lives. Either in tongue or in an inspired utterance. That is what I'm saying. Every believer is entitled to that. Because we have seen in the book of John, they were first given ability. They were first given the authority to cast out demons and also the authority that was released to us as believers is also to speak in new tongues. So you cannot be left behind. You cannot uh, stay for 20 years without receiving the gift of speaking in new tongues. You need to seek. You need to pray. You need to desire. You need to convert. You need to desire more. You need not to neglect the place of speaking in tongues. Because this speaking in tongues is a doorway to a supernatural utterance. When you speak in tongues, you are now able to enter. We, we enter that dimension of understanding what the Lord wants us to do or what he is telling us uh, when we, we speak in tongues. That is a door, one of the doors that we use to enter into the spiritual dimensions. So when we enter that, we are able now to interpret our own tongues in prayer. And when we interpret our own tongues, when you are able as a Christian, as a believer, to interpret your own tongues, it, it doesn't mean that you have now become a prophet. It doesn't mean, mean you can now go around uh, prophesying to people. No. There is a place of growing. There is a place of training. That is what we said in, the last, in our last episode. That there is a place of training for the prophetic office. There is a place of training. For any gift that the Lord will give you, there is a place of training, a place of growing. So grow yourself every other time, every other time, by making sure that you speak in tongues, you interpret your tongues, and you receive more grace to do the work that the Lord has given you. So when you persist in prayer for a long time, for a long time, uh, your spirit will gain mastery. That is, that is what I'm saying. When you persist in prayer, your spirit gains mastery. You are now able, you begin to speak supernatural ones. And it is in this realm 
that you get hold of the prophecy. When you speak in tongues, when you gain mastery, when you uh, arrive, you are aligned in the word of God, in your spirit through prayer, then you start, you start to get hold of the prophetic word. You start to get hold of the rema word. And we said in our previous uh, episode, you can visit our channels, we, we, said, we said that uh, rema word is that word for now. It's a word given for the situation that you are going through now. It's the word that you receive. In the place of prayer is the one that you receive by the Spirit of God that addresses the issues that you have taken to God. And so when you gain that mastery, then you begin to experience, you begin to experience fruitfulness in your place of prayer. You receive the word for your life. You receive the word for your nation. You receive the word. The matter that took you in prayer, your desires are undressed because now you have gained mastery. Now when you have gained mastery, you can stay you can, you know, you can take wrong in prayer. You can have a wrong lengthy discussion with God. You can travel in the realm of the spirit. You can handle matters regarding, now the Lord begins to reveal to you matters regarding your family, matters regarding your church. Because you have now gained mastery, you have, the Lord has taken charge. He has taken control. The authority we have talked about has already now, you know, begin, began to work in your life and in your spirit. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 16 to 20, there is a very, very, very large, you know, very large discussion there when Paul was telling the church uh, about, uh, about what the Lord, uh, what the spirit of God do in our spirit. Uh, let's read verse 16. Yes, verse 16. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself, enduring your innermost being and personality. Now, when you are, when you, if you can just see that, when you get into the place of prayer, when you apply this dynamic, uh, you know, perfect, you know, perfect prayer, the prayer that is to produce results, it means you are granted out of his rich treasury his glory to be strengthened you receive strength you are also reinforced with mighty power in the inner man your inner man is able to soar up high in the dimensions of the spirit you are able now to run without fainting you are able now to you know you are able now to to sustain yourself you are able to be sustained in the place of prayer and that's why you you find people they are people who are who have been graced by god they have been able to to go wrong hours in prayer they have been able to handle issues in life they have been able to you know uh, to address matters for the country matters for the continent matters for the nations they have been able to address their matters because they have received out of his rich treasury, out of the word of God, out of that, that gazing for wrong, they have been able to, to receive his glory and they have been, they have been strengthened and enforced with this multi power that I'm talking about. And the beauty of this power is that it is, it is an enduring in your innermost being. It takes shape of your personality, meaning there is a writing that it does to us. If you are struggled for wrong, if you are struggled in prayer for wrong, the, 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 the solution to that is for you to stick in your place of prayer. Value the word of God. Value the place of prayer. Value your time of communion with God. Don't just come to God bumpered with your problems and issues of life. Spend time, some time addressing, you know, God, ministering to God. Worship him. Come to him with psalms and, you know, and hymns. Exalt God. Through exalting, through adoring him, through a blessing what, you know, what he has given you. The power addressing him, you know, thanking him for the power, for the strength that you have received, then you are able now to receive that mighty power in you. 
and your inner man is able to take charge. You are able to take charge. You are able now to move and cause an effect and cause an impact to your community or to the play, you know, to the things that you have brought before God. Power saint, when we are, we, when we are fully rooted in the word of God, we are able to comprehend. We are able to comprehend, meaning we are able to understand, we are able to perceive, we are able to take hold of something. That thing that you, you have brought in prayer, you are able to take hold of it. You are able to perceive the direction of the spirit and you are able to make it yours. When the word of God takes roots, you know the wrath of Christ that surpasses human understanding. And when you start when you, when you expose yourself to those dimensions, then your spirit is able to perceive things differently. You begin to be filled with the fullness of God. You begin to become a bearer of divine order. The wrong begins to address your spirit. You begin to work. The wrong begins to work with you through the power that works within you. That is what I'm saying. Verse 20 of that chapter Verse 20 of that chapter, the Bible says, Now to him who, by in consequence of the action of his, wow, I like that, in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out the, his divine, his purpose and do super abundantly far above and above all that we dare ask or be infinitely beyond our highest players desires thoughts hopes and dreams this player we are talking about it's beyond your desires it's beyond your thoughts it's beyond your hopes it's beyond your visions and dreams because it takes you direct into the heart of god because the spirit of god knows the mind of god he will be able to help you address your matters according to the will of the Father. And that's why it's very important when the Holy Spirit begins to work with your spirit. It's very important. As believers, we should desire, we should avail us, we should have some time with him, spend some time with him. For us to receive that prophecy, before you receive prophecy from your man of God, before you receive prophecy from that messenger that, you know, bringing that word from God, you need to spend some time in the place of prayer. You need to, uh, you know, to crave, you need to stir up the gift of God within you. When you need to expose you to desire more, to receive the gift of prophecy, you know, so that you can be able to interpret your own players, so that you can be able to, uh, you know, to receive results and to be helped and to have, you know, some moments in the place of prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. God is doing or he is working his work according to the power that works within us. The power to produce miracles in the, in the, natural, in the natural realm must be activated in the place of prayer. The power to produce miracles in the natural realm must be activated in the place of prayer. Do you require any miracle? Do you require any supernatural encounter? That, for that to happen, there must be an, an activation that we will do in the place of prayer. So don't ignore the place of prayer. Value the place of prayer more than you value eating natural food. Value the place of the word more than you value you dressing up every morning. Value the place of prayer. Value your communion with God. Because for any intervention, for any divine intervention in your life, there must be an engagement in a closet somewhere. Praise the name of Jesus. We must put the power of God operational in our lives. The amount of manifestation of miracles will depend, that is what we are, we are saying, on the how much the power of God is operating in you and in me. Praise the name of Jesus. The amount of supernatural happenings that will happen 
for anything to happen in your life, for you to hear that voice, for you to be able to recognize and to hear the voice of God, there must be a consistent, a consistent, continuous place of availing. You must avail you. You must give your body. You must give your finances. You must give everything that is required for you to be in a situation or to be in a place where you are able now to, to, uh, uh, to be available. When you have a challenge in life, maybe because you find at times we have people with challenges. You could be having a challenge in life. You could be having a need for a miracle. You could be having a need for a financial you know, breakthrough. You may have a desire. You may have a petition that you have before God. When you explain those things to people, sometimes people will not understand you. And not even sometimes. Many times people may not understand you. So there is a need to turn to God. And that's why we are saying there is a need to turn and to receive and to, uh, to, you know, to, to address matters in another language. A language that only God understands. Your language, your mother tongue language, doesn't have enough vocabularies to address that matter you want. For you to have a a great move, a great shift, for a great expansion to happen in your life. For that tremendous change that you want to witness in your life, that change will not only happen with your, a prayer with your mother tongue. That change will happen when you engage, when you start to speak in new tongues. But because through speaking in new tongues, you engage with God. You start to speak with God. When you talk to men and they are able to help you, it is good and it is wisdom to start talking to God. And to talk to God, you can only talk to God when you address God with a language that he can understand. And that language is what is taking us into dimensions where we can be able to prophesy. I know we'll handle tongues as a topic with, on its own. But it's good to mention here that when we speak in tongues, we speak mysteries. We speak, the mind, we speak the mind of God regarding us. We speak the moves, the great moves, the great work that the Lord wants to do with us. And so there is a need for that interpretation that we are talking about. So there is there is a place for us. There is a call for us to engage in the place of prayer. Anytime you want to receive a word, I've seen before you get to your man of God, please get on your knees. Get on your knees. Speak to God. Pray that you may interpret the tongues. Pray that the tongues are brought to your understanding. That is the only way that you can be able to, you know, to be effective in your prayer. When your tongues comes to your understanding, we are saying that is a rema word or that is a prophecy. When you start to understand, when you start to understand what you are speaking in tongues, then it means you have received your prophecy. You can act, you can now act on that word that you have received. You can now be able to download and when you download you can be able to function in in it when you interpret that tongue it means you can move that mountain you have received faith enough to move that mountain and that is where the Lord has called us into because the Lord understand we are living in a world that is wicked we are living in the last days. We are living in a world that is using all powers, all manner of powers. So there is a call for the body of Christ to start using the machinery, to start using the tools that the Lord has given us. And the Lord has given us a platform of communion, a platform of power, you know, of prayer, so that we can be able, we can be able to bring the heavens 
down here on earth. And so I'm looking forward to a place of discussing with us next week, a place of tongue in, in the prophecy. There is, there is a place of tongue in the prophecy. There is a place of interpreting tongues. And so all those dimensions can only be found in the prophetic. And so I want to thank you so much for your continued viewership. We cannot thank you enough. We look forward to, uh, to your esteemed company. Next week, same time, we welcome you tomorrow for the spirit drive. We have spirit drive tomorrow uh, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. You can link up with us on our social media platforms uh, and the Lord will greatly bless you. So from this end, Sharon, God bless you.